and we have a number of lumps, a number of units of disc. So say two, two, even three. Let's go wild. Essentially, we enable cluster shared volumes on our 2008 R2 cluster. At the point we enable um, the CSV, cluster shared volumes, we actually get a new folder created at the root of the C drive. So, and it'll be visible on all of the nodes in the cluster. We're suddenly going to see C colon cluster storage. And it's empty. But this cluster storage will appear on all the nodes in this cluster. We then actually go in and we say, okay, well, which storage that's known to the cluster do we want to allocate to CSV, cluster shared volumes? And so I run a wizard, and again, I'll show you this in the demo, and I say, well, I want this disk and this disk. This disk then becomes a child folder of cluster storage, and I will just see volume one. When I add this disk, this becomes a second folder called volume two. This cluster storage and these two subfolders, which are just links pointing to these LUNs, are visible on all the nodes in the cluster. They can all access this namespace at the same time. If on this disk I had a folder called test VM one and test VM two. When I look at cluster storage as child folders of volume one, I will see test VM one, test VM two. It's just linking to the file system that I have here. And again, both of these nodes can access it at the same time. There's a CSV filter. It's a file system mini filter driver that's installed. And it basically says, okay, when you try and access anything under this cluster storage, I need to use some special access mechanisms so that all nodes can access this file system, this portion of namespace at the same time. And so my virtual machines, each virtual machine is stored in its own subfolder of a volume. So my test VM one, virtual machine would be configured to point to C cluster storage volume one test VM one. My second virtual machine, test VM two would be configured to C cluster storage volume one test VM two. Because they can both access that file, that portion of the file system, cluster storage, concurrently, that both can see and write at the same time, if I do a live migration of test VM2 to the other node, there's no failover of the LUN. They both can actually access this LUN at the same time via this uh, portion of the file system namespace that this CSV filter is providing this functionality. So there's no time, there's no need to move the LUN. The LUN is accessible by all the nodes in the cluster. This is only for Hyper-V. So this cluster storage is only designed to support Hyper-V live migration. It's not designed to put file shares on it or anything else. It's just to, to support the live migration functionality. Now there is obviously, there's, there's some restrictions. NTFS is not a, a clustered file system. So if all of these nodes just started writing at the same time, there, there could actually be issues with the metadata in the NTFS not supporting it. So we don't have an owning node of the disk anymore, but we have something called a coordinator node. And essentially the way it works is that for each volume, so for each portion, each disk that maps to a folder, one node acts as the coordinator node for that LUN. And the only difference is, so if I'm doing block level data writes, so if I'm just writing data, I can write to that directly. 
So if So let's say test VM is now from this guy. If I want to write to this disk, just like data, block level data, I do those writes directly. I just write and read block level data directly myself. Now, if I want to do an NTFS metadata change, so same through the metadata, I send metadata requests to the coordinator node. So node is marked as owning that particular LUN. So metadata changes. And then he coordinates and writes metadata. But this can be moved. So I can change the coordinator node from this box to this box. Again, there's no downtime, there's no interruption to service. When I change coordinator nodes, all that happens is for a brief split second, those IO requests are queued up on a node in the cluster until the new coordinator node is ready to start accepting and writing those. Again, you're not gonna actually see anything, it, it, it's that fast. But we get something even cooler happens. So, let's just make this simpler. We have two nodes. Let's just say we have a LUN. So they're both connected at the same time, assuming this is C cluster storage volume one. As we know, if he's writing block level data, he writes it directly. No problem at all. If it's NTFS metadata, he sends it over the network to the coordinator node. So this is the coordinator node, and he writes the NTFS metadata. Now let's say for some reason his link to the storage goes down, actually becomes unavailable. He can actually send all of his I.O. So not just the NTFS metadata, all of his block level data. He can actually send all of that to another node. And he will do that for him. So we actually get protection not just from protecting the NTFS metadata, we now have, well if he loses connectivity, he can actually carry on writing to the disk via this other guy. So this actually gives us protection from different types of connectivity failures, network failures, etc. So that's the big deal, cluster shared volumes enable us to have this multiple concurrent access to NTFS volumes via this special C cluster storage folder. And it, it obviously gives us a, a big saving of management and um, just general amount of storage that's wasted because, again, in the past, what we had to do was, because the LUN was the, the failover object, that was our level of granularity, so, if I had multiple nodes and I had lots and lots of different VHDs, lots of different virtual machines, and I wouldn't be able to fail over those virtuals independently of each other, I would actually have to have a LUN for every single virtual machine to store its own.